Now listen, if you cut the mic off. Listen, if y'all are excited about being seven and oh, that's cool. And I'm excited for you. I'm stoked to listen. I just got off a plane like 20 minutes ago, and I'm excited to be here tonight. But more than being seven and oh, I'm excited tonight because we're about to encounter the power and the love of a risen savior. Somebody make some noise right now. Come on. So check this out. My name is Kervin, and I got two questions for you tonight. I got two simple questions. The first question is this. Are there any people in this place tonight who are in love with Jesus Christ? <laughs> My second question is this. If you love the Lord, then how many of you are willing to do whatever it takes to stand in the gap for your generation? <laughs> Well, this song's for you. Say, Ow! this is for the militant, the war cry of pro-life picketers. Yeah, for my college-age Christian that apologetically ain't afraid to get it in. Where's my junior high gentleman that love God and mirror him like a synonym? Hey, for my front lawn and ministers of truth and love that'll tell Lucifer. to Revive Me 2013. This is our last night. Are you guys ready to go in and have some church? Yes, you guys sound amazing. I just want to pray us in. So if we would just come together and bow our heads and Let's just pray to the Lord. Father God, I just thank you for tonight, God. I thank you for allowing us to be here, God. I thank you for allowing us this appointed time to have an encounter with you. God, I thank you that this is a movement in this place, God. Let your spirit come and rest, rule, and abide in this place, God. God, I thank you that souls will be saved tonight, God. God, I thank you that, that hearts will be healed tonight, God. God, I thank you that people's minds will be transformed by your word tonight, God. God, I thank you that you will have your way in this place tonight, God. God, I thank you right now that your word will manifest within our lives tonight, oh God. God, seal your word in our hearts tonight, Father. God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that we will leave here never um, the same again. In your name we pray, God. God, I thank you that you're going to bless Pastor Chris with the word for me, oh God. You're going to bless Pastor Chris with the word for all of these people in here tonight, God. God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you're going to have your way in, in all of our lives, oh God. Wreck us tonight, God. God, we surrender all to you tonight, God. God, we surrender all of our worries tonight, God. God, we surrender all of our, our, our struggles to you tonight, God. God, we thank you for meeting us in this place tonight, Father. 
Father. Let your anointing rest in this place, God. I know it is your anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage, Father. So I thank you for being here. Let your presence be in here, oh God. Because in your presence, there's fullness of joy, oh God. There's peace, oh God. There's love unconditionally, oh God. God, I thank you for you being in this place tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Everybody, welcome. Welcome Freeway tonight. Amen. Y'all ready to worship tonight? Woo. I said, are y'all ready to worship tonight? Let's go. I need y'all to put your hands together.
Aren't you glad we serve a God that is alive tonight? Hallelujah. We praise you in this place, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you conquered death, hell, and the grave for us, Jesus. That we're able to praise you, Lord God, in freedom, Father God. Just lift your hands tonight. Lift your hands to the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, God.
something from God tonight. But if you've been here since Friday, God's been doing great things. We've come to expect something great from God tonight. Hallelujah. We want him to change our lives tonight in a brand new way. We don't, we don't want to leave this place the same way we walked in. Hallelujah. We're going to sing that one more time. somebody bless him oh come on somebody open up your mouth begin to bless the Lord I just believe somebody came in here under the winds under the waves the storm is beating at your ship. And I believe it's not by accident that you made your way into the house of the Lord tonight. Some of you had to push your way through to make it here tonight. Some of you had to do whatever it took to get in this place tonight. But I'm here to tell whoever you are that came in here facing a storm tonight that we serve the master of the sea. in Matthew chapter 8 he looks at his disciples and he says we're going to the other side let us go to the other side that's not optional you're going to the other side I said it's not optional it's not a probability it's not a possibility it's a guarantee God is going to pull you through. He's going to make sure you get to the other side. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to lift your hands up. I want you to open your mouth. And I want you to exercise your faith tonight. I want you to open your mouth and speak to your storm tonight. Just begin to bless him out of your mouth. Just begin to thank him. Begin to thank him for bringing you through. Begin to thank him for the guarantee. Begin to thank him that no matter what comes your way, God, God has your back. No matter what comes your way, God's got you covered. No matter what weapon that is formed against you, God's got your back. Come on. Exercise your faith tonight. Strengthen your spiritual muscle tonight. Come on. Talk back to the devil that's talking to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, 20 more seconds of talk. Talk your way through it. I dare you to talk your way through it. Come on. Talk your way through it. Hallelujah. Now take those hands together and give you the Lord a thunderous applaud in this place. Come on. Hallelujah. Who's happy to be in the house tonight? Ain't nothing like a room full of Jesus believers ready to get it on. Look at the person next to you and tell them like this, say, get ready. 
get ready, get ready. Now speed it up, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. As you make your way back to your seat. Amen. We are so excited to have you here with us tonight. Sunday night, we know you could be anywhere else. We know some of y'all are celebrating tonight because the Chiefs are still 7 and 0. Oh. Come on, somebody. Oh, I know I could get I know I could get you to go crazy right there. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, indeed. This is going to be a phenomenal season. Interesting to see how it's going to unfold. Amen. Okay, so this is what we do during our young adult services. We're going to do something that's kind of out of the box. We're going to challenge you to get up and do something that we like to call social coffee. We're going to get you up out of your seat, and we want you to walk around, and we want you to go speak to someone, shake someone's hand, learn someone's name that you don't know, and get your social coffee on. You ready? Some of y'all are like, uh, no. I don't know about that one. I don't like to communicate faster. You can do it. You can do it. On the count of three, one, two, three, stand up. We're going to take three minutes. Get your social coffee on.
60 seconds, one minute. Get back to your seats. Make your way back to your seats. social coffee I see that I love it it's offering time in the house of the Lord when I was uh, 15 years old my mother as you guys know she was let go of many different jobs that she had because of her criminal background. And I watched God perform miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle in our lives. And at this point, I had not given my life to Christ yet. Now, I was watching my mama get on her face and call out to God and ask God to bless us and bless our home and bless our finances and praying the prayer of Jabez, bless me indeed. And I was just watching to see what this God that she served would do for her. And as she began to cry out to God, God began to make ways out of no way. We begin to get checks in the mail. Anybody got an unexpected check in the mail before? For the bill that was about a day from being cut off. And the check came right on time. Anybody ever got one of those hallelujah handshakes at church? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I remember hallelujah handshake after hallelujah handshake of random people who had no connection with each other being a blessing to our family. And I watched God make a way out of no way, time and time and time and time again. And my mother said something to me one day after our rent was due and God came through like he did, like he always did. And she said, son, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, that I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. And although I was not saved, although I was not in a relationship with Jesus, that spoke volumes to my heart, spoke volumes to my faith that was beginning to be formed. And I just want to speak to someone tonight. You might find yourself in a situation where you say, it's hard, pastor, to give. It's hard to even think about giving something unto the Lord. But can I tell you, whether we were on government assistance or whether we had checks coming in the mail, my mother was so faithful to give unto the house of the Lord. She was faithful to bring her tithe into the storehouse so that there might be meat in the house. It came to down to a point one time where she'd, she'd give any type of government assistance we had up to 10% in any way she could to make sure that she gave unto the house of the Lord. And I'm here to stand as a living testimony to tell you that I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So I want you to reach down in your pocket, in your purse, and I want you to, to get the best offering that you can get tonight. I want you to do your best because God deserves your best. Amen. If you have a check, you can write it out to Sheffield Family Life Center. If you need an envelope, our ushers are moving expeditiously down the aisles. If you will wave your arms in the air like you just do care, we will make sure that we get an envelope over there. Come on, somebody. Preacher's got to rhyme. <laughs> I'm just Kirvin, a wave. and I'm a rapper. 
And I approve this message. <laughs> Amen. Ushers are moving quickly. Anybody else need an envelope? You can give via debit card as well. Stick that hand up in the air. We want to make sure we get you. Do you know you're sowing in a good seat? You can sow in a good ground. How many of you enjoyed this revival this week? How many of you were here Friday night? How many of you were here Saturday night? We almost didn't leave the building Saturday night, right? Well, how many of you have great expectation for tonight? Our church didn't charge you a dime to come in. Amen. We've, we've done this. We've done this. Uh, and we've been a blessing to, the, to you, to your home. Because we want to see you go to the higher level. Amen. So I think it would be fitting to sow a seed to see this happen again next year. Anybody want to see this happen again next year? Let's sow a seed. If you've got your offering, if you can put it in your hand to strength and just wave it before the Lord. Wave it. Oh, I like that. Got some givers in the house. I love it. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this gift that is being sowed into your kingdom, Father. God, Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. God, I don't know what things they have need of, Father. But I'm just speaking scholarships, God, if they need a scholarship, God. I'm speaking a new job if they need a new job, God. I'm speaking God, a, a life transformation if they need life transformation, God. I'm speaking salvation over loved ones if they need that, Father God. Your word declares that if we would seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, God, you're going to make sure we're taken care of. You're going to add all things unto us, God. So as we honor you by putting you first and sowing into the kingdom, we trust that you in return would sow in and push back into our home. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Ushers, serve the people of God. I'm Curvin, and I'm a rapper. I've been traveling professionally now for the past seven years. But nothing compares to knowing that you're impacting lives through what you love to do. And that's why I'm willing to use my platform for this project. Two years ago, I was introduced to the horrific world of human and sex trafficking. The stories and the statistics were insane. There's an estimated 27 million people being trafficked across the globe as we speak, and only 2% of these victims will ever be rescued. So my idea was to produce an album centered around social injustice with an emphasis on human and sex trafficking. This will be used for a tour that will feature a totally unique cinematic experience. It'll be called Death to Chains. In order to make this a reality, we need $40,000. The money will go towards media and production costs for both the album and the tour. It is our belief that this will raise a genuine awareness of social injustice. Not just the awareness you hear about, but the awareness that drives you to action. Where people, communities, and leaders come together giving so that these girls don't disappear from our cities. Let's get this campaign off the ground and start changing lives. described as an image of purity, the beauty of this rare thing found in society, innocence. Pictured or personified in imagery, captivated by what possesses simplicity, joy found in the littlest of things, like running barefoot in freshly clean cut grass on a perfect day in spring. The adventure that awaits Like a 
against a beautiful shade of sky. Life is satisfying. Time lost in the imagination of pretending to be a famous star, a superhero, powerful, unstoppable. In all my dreams, they all applaud with friends and family. Yeah, that all sounds perfect to me. I believe someday that will be my destiny. I imagine that to be the life waiting for me, my happily ever after. Black and white, there's no color or light there, yeah. No hope, no hugs, no kisses, no love, cause life don't fight fair, yeah. If you listen real close, then you might hear a faint cry drifting through the night's air. Longing for the morning, only to find the nightmare she fights every night, still right there. Uh, the blood and the blows from the fist, the cold of the drugs as they're forced in a system, forced to perform for a forum of men. She's learned if she lies still, the pain's not as intensive. Uh, a princess has gone missing, just a small child hurting and defenseless. But she knows that the beauty of a rose springs forth from the dirt, so through a hurt she whispers. If you're out there, would you bring me back to life? All that I was is gone. Now all I want is death yeah. or death to these chains. In every single night she cries for a hero, but we don't hear those sighs. And as the weeks go by, she dies more and more on the inside. I'm thinking that if we don't rise and if we don't strive for the freedom of human life, then why do we still fight for these legal rights if this freedom is just a lie? Hey, hey, We're focused on our spouses, our vacations, our cars, and our houses. While this small child's drowning without just one soul to care enough to yell it from the mountains, then this freedom ain't free. Justice has a price, but she can't afford the fee. And while we in the raindrops beauty with no filter she doesn't really blame God cause this is how he healed her a new life reborn love everlasting but her blood still cries out for the millions asking God if you're out there, if you're out there would you pray right beside you right now just grab hold hey.
Amen. Amen. Jesus came to this earth for one thing, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the good news to the poor, to set free those living in captivity. And this issue is destroying the lives of babies and adults across this globe. And so tonight, for the few minutes I have before you, right before Dr. Chris comes up to bring the word. I just want to tell you guys a little bit about what my wife and I have done. In January of this year, we started a campaign called Death to Chains. And the whole point of this campaign is to awaken the heart of a generation of young people to take, a, to take responsibility for this issue that's happening on our watch. So in the spring of next year, we're releasing an album It'll be called Death to Change, and we're going to do a 10-city tour. I don't know about you, but I'd love to bring the tour right here to Sheffield, family. I would love to do that. But check it out. Every city we go to, we're going to spend an entire week going into the public schools, and we're going to equip and educate the students on the traps of trafficking and the dangers of of this atrocity that's taking place. We're creating a curriculum to be taught in the public school system as well. And in addition to all that, check it out, in addition to all that, at the end of the week, we're going to attempt, it's a hard thing to do, but we're going to attempt to try to get churches to come together, pastors, city officials, leaders to come together for a time, for a time of prayer and strategy on how to fight these issues in our cities. And then at the very, very end of the whole thing, the end of the whole week when we're there, we're going to do a huge production with music, a full band, with painters. We're going to have young girls with us who've actually been rescued from the sex trade. And we're going to raise money on that evening to fight this issue. So in addition to all the awareness that we want to raise, in addition to all the great things we're going to do in the public school systems, 20% of what we make from that album and 75% of what we make from the tour is going to go to building safe homes for young girls and boys who are rescued. Somebody say amen in this place. And I've had, I've had businessmen and I've had even leaders in ministry tell me, that I'm a fool for taking on a cause. They've told me you can just keep making records and just tour and travel and take care of your family. But I'm just at a point in my life, man, where I, I wanna know at the end of my life that I did something to tangibly affect the life of another. And so tonight, so tonight, Tonight's a special night because we just finished a sneak peek of a, 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 what we call an EP. It's a CD. It has four tracks on it. I want to show it to you here. We just finished it. It's called Death to Chains Beta. And this is just a, this is what we're sending to the public schools and what we're sending to the churches to say, this is just a vision of what we want to do on a larger scale. Do you understand? And so this will come out to the public, not until Black Friday, but tonight is the first uh, you have the opportunity to buy this CD tonight and no one else has it in the country But here's what we're gonna do in order for us to make this thing happen Like you saw in the video. It's gonna cost a lot of money to pull this thing off Money that I ain't got <laughs> But I know one thing I know that if this is God's heart and I know that if it's God's will, it's God's bill And I so believe that Pastor, oh, I'm, I'm crazy. You can come on out here now if you want to. Listen, I so believe that, that tonight, what I want to do is I want to make this CD available to every family in this room. 
I'm not putting a price tag on this CD. But what I'm going to do is ask you to pay whatever you want. Not for a CD, but for the sake of a life that's living in captivity, that, has, that needs the opportunity to be set free. So whenever you stop by my table tonight, I have other CDs, I have other stuff, hats and watches and all that. You can do that. All of that goes to feed the children, my children, all right? <laughs> that's where all that goes, all right? But this particular CD, you pay what you want for it. You can't put a price on a life, but if you could, what would it be? And tonight, if you go to the table, if you have $1, cool. If you have $5, cool. If you have $100 and you want to pay for this, that would be awesome because all of that money helps us bring freedom to babies living in captivity. The average age of the traffic victim is 12 years old. And I'm here to tell you that that breaks the heart of God. But I also believe that there is nothing too big for my God. And he can turn this thing around. Amen. So listen, I love you. I appreciate you. And I just ask for your support tonight at the end of the service. Amen. Bless you guys so much. I'm excited about the word tonight. Y'all make some noise for my brother right now. <laughs> How many of you love Curvin? Listen, let's just... Let's just say a word of prayer over this cause, because this, this is an epidemic in our generation, and we have a chance to do something about it. Amen? So we're going to pray a prayer of faith, and then we're going to put action behind our faith, and we're going to go to that table at the end of the service and support this cause. Amen? Can we get behind him, Sheffield? Amen. Father, we thank you for Curvin. We thank you for his heart, God. To touch this part of our generation, God, that lies in the dark shadows that no one else seems to want to jump into, Father. But God, I thank you for the faith that you've given him and his family, Father, to take on this cause. God, I pray doors would open that no man can shut. I pray for partners, Father, that would fund the cause. I pray for people that would come out of the woodworks, Father, God, bringing awareness to this epidemic in our generation. And I pray, Father God, that in the name of Jesus, through this cause, chains would be broken in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. 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 Why don't you put your hands together for Curvin? We love you. Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet? Pastor Chris Hill is going to come and deliver the word of God to us in just a few moments but before we do that we're going to go back into worship for one more song and just draw his presence in and we're going to let Pastor Chris come up anytime he wants to Pastor Chris Hill is a great man of God awesome pastor but more than anything he's a great father spiritually and naturally thank God I'm so thankful to have him in my life but tonight, before he comes forward, let's do some damage in the supernatural realm. Let's step out there. Let's get our hearts in the right place. Hallelujah. Come on, freeway.
you lift a hand to the father right where you are father in the name of jesus thou comes your servant asking that you would step into this moment with us father we're not asking for a monologue we're asking for a dialogue that you would speak to us and speak back to us and through us and with us that our conversation would be heavenly and that people would hear and know that this is not the thinking of a man, but this is the word of God. God, I pray that supernaturally you would arrest attitudes and arrest mindsets, shatter paradigms and reshape hearts tonight. That you would do like only you can do tonight. That you would shake the shackles of sin, self, and Satan and propel us to our highest purpose in Christ Jesus. Now, I need somebody just to stomp your foot devil you're under our feet tonight you have no power you have no authority you have no influence in this place we boldly decree that this is the house of the lord this is the people of the lord this is the song of the lord this is the presence of the lord and wherever the presence of the lord is there is liberty in jesus name that release us into all of our gifting we pray in a supernatural way and now somebody say for Jesus Christ tonight. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. You may be seated. We greet you with Jesus joy tonight. My name is Chris Hill. It's my privilege and an honor to be here to, with you tonight on the concluding night of this Revive Me revival. Has anyone been blessed by the revival? I'm so thankful that they allowed this old man to come and holler just one last time. Thank God. Uh, what a wonderful day we've had at this great church. Can we have a great hand for the senior pastor of this great church on the front row? Come on, let's thank God for my friend. Come on, let's thank God for the man of God. Let's thank God for the pastor of this church, for opening the doors of this church for three nights for young people to find Jesus. We celebrate you and salute you tonight, and we're so honored to be here with you. And what can we say about the baddest young adult pastor in America? Can we thank God for Pastor Ontario Green and Lady Crystal? <laughs> them and thank God for you. Lean over with your neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. Say I like you. I Do you like me? Like me. Wait for an answer. <laughs> if you get a bad answer, just move your seat. Life is too short to sit next to somebody hateful. Hallelujah. When I go to church, I want to be next to somebody that when the blessing of the Lord hits my row, that they got a holly for my luya. They got a thank you for my Jesus. I want to be next to somebody that's already on fire because I'm believing that God's about to do something in our midst tonight. He's going to take us higher in Jesus' name. If you believe it, say yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, okay. I got a lot to do. Thank you, Jesus, in a little, little bit of time. Uh, we, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try not to rest. Okay, um, the, the first that we have, I need a leader. I need a youth leader who's here, who loves God and is actively serving in this church as a youth leader. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, he did it. <laughs> Amen. That, that was the last one of that. We have 12 more of these left. You guys have been such a blessing to us. And, and I, I'm thankful, Pastor, that they just bought everything. And so we have 12 more of these left. This is a series that it's actually, uh, my wife and I did this together. My wife, Joy, we've been married for 21 years. Amen. She's the mother of all my children. Amen. She'll be with me all the days of my life until they take me to the general hospital. Okay, y'all too slow. Um, <laughs> hallelujah, that was, no, never mind. Um, and, but we did this together. Um, we, we've been together for 30 years. Uh, we dated for seven years. We were married. We were engaged for two, and then we married 21 years together. And so we do a lot of stuff on marriage and couples and, and things. And then we, we do a lot of things for premarital and, and a lot of things like that. But we did this uh, together. We preached this sermon in a car together. We drove a car out on our stage. Our stage is, is just about as big as this. And so we were able to drive the car out, and we preached it inside the car. And, and it, it's three sermons, the first one talks about the blind spot. It is the ability for somebody else sitting in another seat to be able to see something you can't see. And if you're going to make it in a, in a marital relationship and make it 30 years together, you're going to have to realize that her perspective may not be your perspective, but his perspective may not be your perspective. But when you get both of y'all together, you can miss, you won't miss anything. You'll see it all. It's called the blind spot. The second one is called don't touch my radio. This was, this one has gone all over the world. I did this at manpower with Bishop T.D. Jakes, but this is another version that I did for families, particularly for people who are married or want to be married married one day this will bless your life don't touch my radio it talks about how you have to share and compromise and 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 and, and enjoy each other's soundtrack because if you enjoy each other's soundtrack you can make beautiful music together amen and, and then and the last one was junk in the trunk I put a, a Benz on stage drove a Benz on stage and inside of the trunk of this car were all these different issues that we got to deal with and you got to get all the junk out your trunk before you put somebody in your car Oh, y'all not going to talk to me. I need a young person. A young person. A younger person. <laughs> y'all are too... Come, 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 you in the blue. 
in the blue. Come get it. You made noise. Like faster than that. <laughs> Here you go. I'm not going to throw that to your girl. Bless you, daughter. There's, so there's 12 more back out there, elders, so you can get those. When you're on your way to Curvin's, hey, everybody's going to stop at Curvin's. Curvin's, Cur hey, Curvin, and get, get, get that. And then on the way back, just stop by, see Dr. Hill's stuff. Amen. Enough said? Amen. Boom. Get a Bible. Go to 2 Samuel chapter 7. Let's close our sermons for today. 2 Samuel chapter number 7. Put them all together tonight. Go with me to 2 Samuel uh, chapter number mm, Ooh, okay. Let me back up to chapter number six, second Samuel chapter number six. Uh, I want to look at verse number 14. We'll begin where we ended and then end where we began. In second Samuel chapter number six, verse number 14, when you have it, say amen. amen. It's our custom to stand for the reading of God's word. So if you'd be so kind as to get that by, open it up and just amen. We'll read together. I'll read it in your hearing and you can follow along in your Bible. I know there are many versions of the Bible. I have the old King James version of the Bible. Amen. I, I have many versions at home, but I have King Jimmy with me tonight. Glory to God. Second Samuel chapter number six, verse 14. Here reads the word of the Lord. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. And so David and all of the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw a king and saw, saw King David leave Weeping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Somebody say, she despised him in her heart. I, I can't hear you say, she despised him in her heart. And they that brought up the ark, and they that brought, brought in the ark of the Lord, set it in his place, set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well as to the women and men, to everyone a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine and so all the people departed everyone to his house verse 20 all this to get to verse 20 then David returned to bless his household and Michal the daughter of Saul came out to meet David and said how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaidens of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself and David said unto Michal Michal it was before the Lord Lord, which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of, of the Lord over Israel therefore I will play before the Lord I will yet be more vile than thus and will be based in mine own sight and of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of of them shall I be had in honor therefore Michal daughter of Saul had no child unto the day of her death. I'm going to stop right there. I, I want to just talk to you very quickly from the thought an undignified praise. An undignified praise. An undignified praise. Let's pray. Father God, help us. Amen. Sit down. No time for a long prayer. If we ain't ready now, we ain't ready. Amen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, we've been dealing with David. Uh, we've been dealing with David in the Ark of the Covenant. And of course, those of you with me in the 11 o'clock service, you remember that David brought in the Ark of the Lord. He brought it from the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, and he brought it from there to Jerusalem. This is significant because David has just changed the whole order of, the, of, of that Moses set in place. He has changed the whole Sinai, the, the whole Sinai experience of how they were supposed to worship God has been totally revolutionized by this man David. I told you earlier that David is both a warrior and a revolutionary. He is both a warrior and a worshiper. He is revolutionary in his warship, in his warriorship. He's also revolutionary in his worship. See, David's going to do something that is so incredible because for hundreds of years they have been doing it the way that Moses has laid down. They had the labor, they had the brass labor, they had the table of showbread, they 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 had the all 
altar. They had all of the accoutrements. They had they had the ark of the covenant was in the holy of holies. It had, there was the inner court and there's the outer court. There were all of the trappings that they used and all of the devices that were set down by Moses that that were all pictures of Christ. I wish I had time. I'd break them all down for you. But but I want you to understand that what David does is he walks right by the brazen laver. He walks right back the by the altar. He walks right by the showbread. He rocks right by the table of instance and he says go get me the ark of the covenant because the ark of the covenant was the place where the shekinah of glory would sit down see you got to get to the place where you say i like everything about church but i don't want to be caught up in church because i came really to church to see the glory of god it's not that i don't like you it's that i like god more than i like you and i came to experience the glory of god anybody want to see his glory come down anybody want to see his fire come down anybody want to see somebody's life change it only happens by the glory and so David declares, just go get me the ark. Get me the ark because that's where the glory of God is. And, and without a veil and without a holy of holies and, and without a tent of meeting and without an outer court, or inner court or a holy of holies, I, I want to bring it right where I live. Mm. Because I need Jesus when I wake up in the morning. I wish I had one good witness in here. With all the pressure and all the stress and all the things that you got to deal with, the enemy will try and get you before you even get out of bed. There's some devil that will try and bring some worry to your mind before you even get out of your house. Now you got text messaging, you got email, you got all this way for you to get some bad news. But when the devil comes to give you some bad news, you need to give him the good news that Jesus Christ is on your side and you are in over. says I'm going for it I'm gonna go get it I'm gonna go after it I am seeking for it I want it and I'm going for it help me preach push your neighbor say let's go for it let's go for it oh you didn't push him say let's go for it let's go for it I'm sick and tired of people who want to sit around and wait for something to happen I don't have time for you anymore I'm too old to wait for somebody who is fixing to and thinking about doing something bust a move we must improve it's about unless they move people who think about things forever forever ever forever you've been talking about doing that for so long don't nobody else want to even hear you say it not even God it's about time for you to do it you're losing spit and wind and time and I don't need it. I, I got an organ inside. I want you to understand because if we do that, we'll go there and I, I can't go there because I'm on assignment. I want you to understand that the greats do something. Your Bible is full of people who did something with their life. Moses is standing yeah, he's looking at some sheep. He's not born to be a shepherd. He's born to be a deliverer. But because he had some trouble, mm -hmm, he was stuck shepherding. But God set a bush on fire. See, only God can set something on fire and it doesn't go out. If you want to see a real Christian, it's somebody who's been through hell and high water, but they still got their fire and they're not going out. And they say, devil, take your best shot. I'm still burning for Jesus. See, I want you to 
understand something? It's, it's the only thing that made Moses turn was something on fire. We want a generation to change, but why would they want to be like us? We broke, busted, and disgusted. We can't keep our families together. And they look like the sinner doing better than us. It's time to flip the script on the devil and the king's kids to begin to shine forth the light of God in this community until the devil knows that we are here and we will not back down. We're born to smack down in Jesus' name. David is noted because he did something. Moses is noted because he did something. Esther is noted because she did something. Ruth is noted because she did something. Glory to God. It's time to do something. I don't know what to do. Then just do something. Glory to God. See, people are waiting for God to send this divine blueprint down. We're waiting for the PowerPoint presentation from glory. I came to tell you that God doesn't work that way. God says you take one step and I'll show you the next step when you get to that step. God says I'm not going to give. God does not give you GPS. He gives you just directions enough to get to where you need to go. And then he says I'll give you more information. He said Abraham, just start walking and I'll show you a city. How will I know when I get there? When you get there, somebody just say, it's like Nike, just do it, just do it, just do it, just, just do it. <laughs> David goes after the Ark of the Covenant. Nobody tells him to. He doesn't ask anybody's permission. He's the king. He goes after it. It doesn't work the first time. Don't be deterred that it didn't work the first time. Push somebody, say, do it again, do it again. See, the wonderful thing about doing something first is nobody expects you to be able to succeed. So stop tripping that it didn't work the first time. No baby starts walking and just walks. Have you ever seen babies, their head bigger than their body? They put that head forward and they just start, you know. And they fall down. Nobody says, oh no, that's it, Junior. You're going to crawl the rest of your life. No, we applaud the fact that they took a step. See, some people are upset with Peter because Peter fell in the water. But I'm not mad at Peter. He walked a lot further than those other jokers in the boat. And I would rather be a wet water walker than to be a dry boat talker. I'd rather be somebody who went down doing something than somebody who sat in the boat and criticized those that do something. How long are you going to be a baby? How long are you going to sit in your seat and dream about being great when God called you to be great? David said, let's go get it. Let's go get it. It didn't work the first time. He was not deterred. He backed up. He thought about it. He experimented with somebody else. He sent that ark to the house of Obedim. He heard out that Obedim was getting blessed. <laughs> On every side. He said, I'm going to get it now. We know how to do this. He studied. He brought the ark in, and when he brought the ark in, see, ladies and gentlemen, I began to elucidate it in the, in the second service. He said that he took six steps, and after every six step, he offered fatlings. He offered, he offered a sacrifice of fatlings and oxen. He literally did this for every six paces all the way to Jerusalem. Every time they went six steps, he gave a sacrifice. 
Can you see him? He's covered in blood. He takes off his royal robes. He takes off his glad rags. See, sometimes I think we come to church not dressed to really praise God. <laughs> expecting that we might mess up our mascara. <laughs> come to church expecting to sweat out your perm. <laughs> come to church expecting to need to adjust. You see, because we get so prissy and so sedity that we forget where God has brought us from. And if you can remember where he brought you from, it makes you excited about where he's taking you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says he comes not with royal robes. He comes with a linen effort. He comes with a, a linen effort dressed in a priest peasant gown. He comes because he is sacrificing every six steps all the way to Jerusalem. He gives an offering. He's praising God and he's dancing and he's twirling and he's leaping and he's shouting. But Mikael. Mikal, mm. Mikal is David's wife, but it's complicated. <laughs> Touch them, I say it's complicated. It's somewhat of a situation. Um, she loved David, and she saved David's life. She snuck him out the window when her father Saul was trying to kill him. Uh huh. But when, when David ran, he had to run for his life because Saul was trying to kill him. And, and Saul gave her to somebody else. And she kind of fell in love with the somebody else, even though she was married. Sound like scandal, don't it? You should read the Bible. The Bible's really interesting. And, and, and so by the time David comes back into power, he, he's, one of the first thing he does, he says, I want my wife back. So he goes to where she is and brings her back. And the Bible says the other man who saw her giving her to, um, he stands outside crying in a place called Gollum. Hey, he's, he's just crying and he's crying. And David takes his wife back. He, he, he takes his wife back and he, he puts her back in the royal palace. And he, he loves on her. But you see, when sometimes when, when people haven't gone through what you've been through, they don't appreciate God the way you appreciate God. See, see, all that time he was in the cave and, and all that time he was hiding from Saul and, and all that time he was killing Philistines, he was developing a relationship with God because sometimes you got to go through something hard to get a strong relationship with God because when you go through trouble and trauma and hard times, it develops a kind of character in the crystal, in, in, it, it, is in the, it, is in, it is in crisis that... Christ crystallizes the character of the Christian. And if you never go through the furnace of affliction, I wonder if your faith is real. Because a faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. But when you've been through some stuff and you've been through some problems, and you found out that God was not only for you in the problem, he was with you in the middle of the problem. And when you get to the other side, when the devil throws some light at you, you say, devil, is that all you got? I've been through worse than this, and I'm still standing. Somebody say amen. amen. See, they didn't go through the trouble together. And so when David comes in with the Ark of the Covenant, he just was made king last chapter. He's excited. Bible says he's jumping. He's leaping. He's whirling and dancing. And Mikal sees him and thinks that's just too much. <laughs> Don't judge my breakthrough until you've seen my been through. Oh God, help me. When you see what I've been through, you understand why I praise God the way I do. 
because he's been real, real good to me. I wish I had one witness here today. Somebody that God saves your life. Somebody that God snatched you from the flame. Somebody that God set you up on high and your enemies don't even know how you got there. Baby, you don't even know yourself, but you know if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side. Show ya! See, I gotta hurry. I gotta hurry. See, I want you to understand. Sit down, y'all keep jumping up. We just talking. See, I want you to understand something that is significant and it must be noted is that, is that because they did not have an experience of pain together, they didn't have the same perspective on how great God is. See, when you've been through great trouble and God got you out, you know how big your God is. When you've been through something that should have killed you and the devil was ready to take you out, but you said, God, you cried unto him and he heard you and he snatched you from the mouth of your enemy. It gives you a different perspective on God. It lets you know that my God is bigger than any trouble. He's bigger than any obstacle. He's bigger than any problem. And he deserves a big God like that deserves a big praise. Uh-huh. See, she was in the window. Everybody else is in the street. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody else is dancing and spinning and praising God. Where is she? <laughs> she's in the window with an attitude a ratchet she all in the window what they doing down there oh my god oh my god is that David he has on a linen t-shirt I can't believe where is his robes Oh my God. <laughs> See, they're saying the same thing, but it's a different attitude. See, she's up in the window looking at him saying, oh my God. He's down here spinning and turning saying, oh my God. I wish I had some oh my God people in here. Somebody that God made a way for you. Somebody that God helped you get out. Somebody that God made a way. Show ya! <laughs> I gotta finish. See, see, it is significant to note from the text, and I want you to see it. It is as if your attitude is so high that you will miss an opportunity to have an encounter with God. The only time that Jesus looked down on people was when he was on the cross. They brought a woman to him who was caught in adultery and they threw him at her, threw him in the midst of them. And the Bible says that he stooped down lower because they had thrown her in the midst and he began to write on the ground because he didn't want to be looking down on her like they were looking down on her. The only time Jesus ever looked down was when he hung his head and died on the cross for us because he does not look down on us because he knows that our potential is great. And even though I might have messed up, my mess up is not who I really am. He can do something with my life. He can make a message out of a mess. He can take a tragedy and make it a triumph. He can take a scar and make it a star. He can change it in your life. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is significant, and I need you to see this. He said, the only reason why she didn't get it 
if she hadn't been through it. Never put a hater in charge of your praise. Do you understand, hater? I know I'm in Kansas City, but uh, uh, hater, uh, uh, those people been, you know, drinking a hater eight. Haters, uh, they, 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 they didn't expect you to do nothing anyway. She had moved on with her life. She never thought she would see David again. He was going to be killed. And she was, she was surprised when he came and ding dong and, well, no, no bell, no, no door. When he shook her tent post and said, send her up out of here. Because there's been some people who wrote you off. But when they wrote you off, God wrote you in. And they're going to be surprised by what God's going to do in your life. Because even your backstabbers are pushing you forward. <laughs> Y'all not ready for me. Ladies and gentlemen, when people have not gone through what you've gone through, don't expect them to even understand. Stop trying to argue with somebody who's never been through anything and say, wait a minute. <laughs> You get, you'll get your time you'll understand my grandma used to say just keep on living keep on living keep on living you're going to find out that there's going to be some nights you have to cry you're going to find out there's some nights you got to walk the floor there's sometimes when the only thing holding you together is the hand of God himself when it's going to be sometimes when you got to fight hell for yourself but if God before you who can be against you God will fight with you God will fight for you he will be with you Man, he's dancing, he's spinning. It's a crazy, undignified praise. But David lets her know the reason why I'm praising is because God picked me. <laughs> I wish I had somebody here who was glad that God picked you. See, nobody knows you like you. You look all good in your church clothes. You got your clean shirt on. Thank God you took a shower. And you look all nice, but, but God, God knows the real you. He knows you're down sitting. He knows you're uprising. He knows what you look like without your makeup on. He still loves you. Glory to God. I, I, I grew up in the old Pentecostal church, an old Pentecostal holiness church. And, and they, they didn't believe in nothing. We didn't believe in nothing. I started preaching when I was four years old. And so I've been preaching for 41 years. So, so I've been preaching a long time. So I, I, I grew up in the old church and we started, and we preached against everything. We, we, everything sent you to hell. Everything. All y'all in bright colored clothes. Hell. Hell, I preached against the Smurfs. I preached against I Dream of Genie. I ran revival against Tinky Winky. Glory to God. I, I'm an old school fire. I preach hell so good you could smell your clothes burning on your body. People would come running out of their seat to give their life to Jesus because we thought everything, all of your open toed shoes. If those church mothers saw any toe cleavage whatsoever, <laughs> hell. <laughs> no makeup. No. And the problem was the sisters in the church I grew up in. They needed Mac and Mary Kay, Bobby Brown, Whitney. They needed everybody. They needed everybody to come in there and start patting people down. I'm not saying.
and they're ugly, but when you, the preacher would tell you to tell your neighbor something, you'd turn and look at them and go, ah! <laughs> oh, God, I'm weighing this. gets everything I mean everything but I found out that it wasn't about preaching about hell it was about preaching about the plan of God for your life I found out that I believe in hell I believe in a literal hell and I can still preach hell I preach hell real good about one time a year and get everything wrong right in my church but but for the most part I preach about the promise of God I preach about the potential of God because only God can appreciate you the way you are but love you enough not to leave you where he found you he's the one that says I've got a plan for you I'm going to do something great in your life I want to use you Mikael didn't understand David's God. Moreover, she didn't understand David. Never put your hater in charge of your identity. If your hater said it, why are you listening? You knew that your hater they don't like me <laughs> they don't like me Pastor. I don't know if I could go to that church there are 7,000 members in this church you gonna let one member keep you out you can sit on the other side of the building and never even see him go out the other door if you're me I'd go over to him every Sunday and hug him and say I'm still here hallelujah <laughs> I'm still here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Here I am. You need to learn how to hug your hater. Give him a hater heart attack. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Face all sucked up like they've been sucking lemon juice. Just go over there and hug them. Say, yes, I'm still here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Love ya. And just go back to your seat. See, I want you to understand something. It's significant is that we allow people to hold us in when God is calling us out. We allow people to, to keep us in the boat and keep us in the middle of the storm instead of speaking out our identity and allowing the Holy Ghost to get in the wind and the wave and bring peace to our situation. We stay dignified to please them but your hater will never be pleased. Just when you change to adjust for that, it'll be something else they don't like. Cause they're a hater. Haters gotta hate. It's what they do. What I love about David is the Bible says that he, that, that he says, the reason why I praise him the way I praise him is because he picked me. Knowing everything wrong with me, he still picked me. Knowing where I would fail, he already knew about Bathsheba before David knew about Bathsheba. God knew about Bathsheba, but he still picked him. Knowing about his crazy kids, that he was going to have some crazy kids, he still picked him anyway. Anybody glad that he still picked you? He knew everything wrong with you. But he still picked you. He said he picked me and because he picked me. I will praise him and I will become even more undignified than this. I will become vile in my own eyes. I, I'll do things. Mm, see, see, you've never really praised God till after you got done praising him, you almost felt embarrassed. See, some of you don't even know about because you've never been that deep in praise. Until you woke up on the carpet and didn't know how you got there. 
See, we have a whole generation that is so, it's so contrived, it's so karaoke, that, that uh, we're just reading words off the screen, but those words have to get off the screen and get into our heart. We don't know what it is to be at an altar until you don't know where you are. We don't know what it is to be lost in the presence of God. And when you come out, your friends are kind of snickering at you like, did you see you? Dude, dude, man, you were jumping in. I don't know what happened to you, man. Where'd you go? We don't have a something got a hold of me no more. We have a generation that has been raised in a, in a charismatic movement and never had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I'll become even more indignified. He said, I don't care who's looking. I don't care who's staring out the window. In fact, stay up in your window. In fact, he says, he says, and he says, mm. let me put this with young people. He says, mm. Bible says that she never had a child in her life because haters don't reproduce. Haters stay sterile. Haters dry up and die. All you got to do is walk long enough, Moses, and they'll die off in the wilderness. And then you can take the grateful people into the promised land. Just be patient enough to walk them to death. Hallelujah. See, some people think that God did some powerful work on her womb and shut her womb. I don't think it was that spiritual. I think that David's... Dave, how do you say this with young people? David never touched her again. Read your Bible. He has seven wives. He said, next. <laughs> he said, eh, wrong answer. Survey said, no. <laughs> Go. Sam man came, it was bad. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to choose to shake the shackles of what people consider dignified. It's time for us to dare to say, they may not understand what I'm going to do, but I'm going to believe God anyway, because he's been so good to me. Let me end here. Uh, I've had the opportunity to go around the world three times. And so I've been all over the world and I, I love to watch people praise God. I love to watch people praise God. It is one of the joys of my life and joys of my ministry is that God has sent me so many different places to preach the gospel. One of the greatest things that ever happened to me in my ministry is I was somewhere preaching the gospel. And I've been preaching for so long. I've been preaching for 41 years. So I can think on one side of my brain and talk on the other side. So I can be talk, preaching to you right now, but I can watch everything else in the room and I can have a whole nother thought process going on in my mind at the exact same time that I'm talking to you because I'm I've been doing this so long. I was someplace and I was I was preaching and there was a woman who, who was she was she she stood up she she was stood up and she just started dancing. There was no music. I'm preaching, I'm in point one. I'm giving an honor to God and to the bishop and to the pastor and to the prelates and the presiding elders of the, you know, I'm just doing my honors, and she just But I'm good, I've been doing this a long time. I'm, it's not my first rodeo. I'm not distracted by people. People don't distract me, that's for rookies. I, I can, you just put your head down, you just keep preaching. Just, just keep preaching, just keep preaching. You just keep preaching. But then she came out in the aisle. I'm in point two now. 
and she just she just dancing. Hey, hallelujah! I just kept on just stay in the pocket, keep on rocking, just stay on the track, just stay on track. Then she came down to the front. And she really started to pray. Now, I know, I know, I'm, uh, I know. It's, you know, I, I, it, 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 she, she, and while she was dancing, she had a wig. Chris, how do you know she had a wig? So glad you asked. Because it fell off in the middle of the service for a lesser preacher this would be a problem but I just kept on preaching I was fine until she bent down picked up the wig and began to swing it around her head like it was a helicopter then I stopped my organist and I said okay we need to talk to this lady I said lady <laughs> what's up with this and she, she said when when you started preaching you started talking about that if I praise God there'll be a miracle and so I just started praising God in my seat I wasn't feeling that good but I started praying and then as I was praising God I started to feel really really good and and so I went out into the aisle because when I got out into the aisle the second I stepped out in the aisle the second I took a step out in the aisle uh, the, the cancer that's on my body fell off there it is it's over there She said, so I came to the front to praise God. And while I was praising God, my wig fell off. And at first I was embarrassed, but then I realized that that was prophecy because I won't be needing this wig anymore. So yeah, so yeah. I can tell you stories all night long. I was in Russia. I was in Russia preaching the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I was preaching in Russia and I'd, I'd, I'd never been to Russia before. Never wanted to be in Russia. But the Lord told me to go. And so I was there preaching. Uh, and if you've never been to Russia, the Russians are interesting. Kind of somber people. 70 years of communism. Jack you up. And then the meeting was bigger than this, much bigger than this. And all these different people had come. There were, there were five different languages. And, and so if you never preach through five different translators, it, it, it's, you say, praise the Lord in English. The next person says, Slava Bagu. In, in Russian, the next person says, Yabba Dabba. I don't know what they were saying. <laughs> it was Russian. It was Latvian. It was, it was, in, it was Gypsy. <laughs> Rom. And I'd say, praise the Lord. Next day I would say, slop the goo. The next day I would say, yeah, but I would do. Next day I would say, mama say, mama say, I don't know. <laughs> By the time it got back to me, I had forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> Went back to my hotel room. I said, God, why am I here? I am not a black Russian. <laughs> Take me back to America, England, someplace where they speak English. Australia. He said, shut up, go back in there. Went back in there and preached. And they didn't move. They, the crowd was so dead. They didn't laugh. They didn't smile. They just stared at me. I said, Lord, I don't want to do this again. I went back to, back to my hotel room. I went to call American Airlines or whatever it was, the thumbs to get, to get me out of there. Lord said, put the phone down. 
you're going to preach tomorrow. I said, okay. I went back in there. I had no more sermons. I was out of sermons. I preached everything. I preached all the bishop stuff. Nothing. Nothing moved. I began to make up stuff. The book of Hezekiah. I'm just... There is no book of Hezekiah. I'm just, just on the spot. Just whatever God gave me. The last night of the revival, at the end of the service, they all stood up like you're standing. They all stood up. It scared me. Because I didn't know they had legs. They stood up and they began to dance. It just broke out. It was, it, and they're Russian, so they started to, you know, dance. You see, in America, we kind of, in Australia, they, you, know, they come, you know, they do that. Uh, but in, in Mexico, they do that. But when Russians, you know, they're like, I mean, it scared me. They all got it on the aisle and started running around the church. Slaughterbook, and then if you go, I'll go with you. If you go, I'll go with you. If you don't go, I'll, I, hey man, I got another place to preach tomorrow. But if you go, I'll go with you. They, they're there, there, hallelujah. I'm like, hallelujah. Slaughterbook. Yabba dabba do. Mama say, mama say. There was one little girl, she was in a wheelchair. And she was in the wheelchair and she saw everybody else running and dancing. She got out in the aisle and she started rolling her wheelchair around like everybody else. And I'm just yelling and screaming, but I can think and preach at the same time. And I'm seeing this little girl. I'm like, God, look at that. She's, a, she's not even there yet. She hasn't got the manifestation of her healing, but she's praising you in the middle. She's rolling around and Everybody else is running. I'm screaming. Finally, they're alive. <laughs> Felt like Jesus at Lazarus' tomb. It was awesome. The, the auditorium, we had, they had the makeshift, and so we had cables down the middle aisle back to the camera in the sound booth. And she was coming to the cable, and, and she was going too fast. She was rolling. She was going too fast. And I wanted to say, little girl, slow down. There's a cable in the middle. But that would mess up the meeting. And I, I didn't know what to do. So I just kept screaming, slop, praise the Lord. She hit the cable, just like I thought. Her wheelchair tipped over. She was thrown out. She landed on her feet and just kept on running like everybody else. <laughs> healed by the power of God. Instantaneously healed. Because something happens when you step out. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You're here tonight. And it's your time to step out. The first step is to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. The first step is to really be serious about this thing called Christianity. To really be serious about God. To say, I, I'm, I've tried it my way and I'm ready to do it God's way. I, I want to be a child of God. I want to be a Christian in my heart. Not just in name, but in deed and in heart, frame, mindset, and paradigm. My pastor raced, I want to stand in his grace, a new creation. If you're here tonight and you're saying, preacher, that's me. I want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. If that's you, somebody already did it. Just lift your hand right where you are. Because somebody's going to, I see that hand. I see, I see, I see. I see on the side. I see in the back. I see you, I see you, I see you. I need to make Jesus Christ. I see you, I see you. I see hands everywhere, hands everywhere. Backslider, that's you tonight. That's you tonight. He, he wants you. I see you in the back, way up the back, up the side. There, 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 there. So many hands tonight. So many hands tonight on this, the final night of the revival. You need to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. If you raise your hand for prayer, I had you stand for this reason so you wouldn't have to climb over anybody. Because if you raise your hand for prayer, I want you to come right out of your seat. Come down to the sacred altar because I want to pray with you tonight. 
I want to pray with you tonight myself that you would receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Come right out of your seat. Come right out of your seat. Come. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. That's it, daughter. That's it, son. Come right out of your seat. If you lifted your hand for prayer, come right down to this altar. I want to pray with you tonight. I want to pray with you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Would you bow your head? I want to sweep this room one more time because I feel a few more people who need to make a decision. Church, if you could pray just a moment because I feel that, that thing in your stomach, it feels like butterflies. It's not butterflies. That's the Holy Spirit drawing you to the bleeding side of Calvary tonight. This is your night. Tonight is your night to make Jesus Christ Lord. It's your night. Preordained in heaven is tonight is your night. And if you're here right now, oh, Shay, and you say, I didn't raise my hand or raise my hand. I, I should have raised my hand. It doesn't matter. Come right out of your seat. Come down to the sacred altar. In the remaining moments of this service, I want to pray with you to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Come here. Come right out of your seat. Thank you, sir. Come, daughter. Come, son. Right now. If I had to come by myself, I'd come by myself. If there was nobody else in my family, I'd come to Jesus. If I had to roll myself out into the aisle to make him Lord, I'd do it. Maybe you're here with a friend and you're a little bit nervous. I guarantee you, your friend, if you ask him, will walk you right down to this aisle to receive Jesus Christ. Will you be an evangelist? Just ask the person next to you. You want me to walk you down to receive Jesus tonight? Let's be sure. Last night at the revival, tomorrow is not promised. There is no guarantee of tomorrow. Your life may be required of you tomorrow. And so I'm going to push here. I'm going to push a little bit. Because there might be one soul. Hallelujah. The greatest decision I ever made in my life was when I made Jesus Christ my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Here's another one. Here's another one. Yes. Somebody else. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody else. Somebody else. 30 seconds, your choice. Heaven or hell, your choice. My bishop taught me, he said, son, when you go back to your hotel room after preaching, wash your hands in the sink because if you told them what the Lord told you to tell them, then the blood is not on your hands. Tonight I told you what the Holy Spirit gave me to tell you. In the next 20 seconds, 20 seconds, your choice. 20 seconds, your choice. Thank you, Jesus. Will you make Jesus Christ your Lord tonight? Somebody else needs him. Somebody else wants him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have people? Do you have anybody? No. You want to take them out? Huh? You have leaders going to come forward? They're going to come forward? Leaders, come forward. Lay a hand on the shoulder. Come on, let's pray together. I'm going to pray together. All the leaders, if you... Thank you, Jesus. Come help me. Brilliant. My, my boat is sinking. Last night, I thought everybody would be saved by now. But I didn't want to make it, take a chance and miss an opportunity. Because there's another category of person that I want to pray for tonight. I want to pray for people that God is calling you to step out. God is calling you to step out, to try. He's been talking to you for a long time. I found out that God does not have to move you to move you. I found out that he can leave you in the same geographic location, but begin to use you at a whole nother level. It begins with us taking a step. If that's you, I want you to join us at this altar. If that's you tonight, you feel that the Lord is calling you. There's a call on your life. He picked you in spite, in spite, in spite. You almost don't even understand why you're like me. My first question when I meet Jesus upon that crystal shore is why? Why me? 
You could have left me alone in the stock exchange. You could have left me alone. But you called me. I'm glad he called me, but I don't understand why. You could have got somebody sane. You could have got somebody normal. You could have got, got somebody who was naturally nice. I got to pray to be nice. I know I'm the only one in the building. Nice is not my normal. My normal is leave me alone. And yet God put me in a position where I'd be surrounded by people. So I'd have to pray every day. I'm an introvert. I'd rather write a sermon than preach it. And yet he called me to do something that is not my natural inclination. Until now you can't even tell it's my weakness. Because he made my weakness my strength. Only God can do such a thing. Give me a heart for people. Made me an evangelist a pastor, a father to the fatherless, a preacher to the world. Only God. He sees you. He knows you. He loves you. He'll use you. We're going to pray the same prayer together at this altar. Just say, Father God. Everybody pray. Say, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son. The Lord Jesus Christ who died on a cross just for me. Say, Lord, you died for me. I'll live for you. All that I am and all that I have. I commit my life to serve you. Use me as you see fit. I give my life to your service. You're my savior. You are my Father, and you are my Lord. Not my will, but your will be done in Jesus' name. Just want to pray for you while you're standing there. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the opportunity to add my faith to theirs. Them that are stepping out to say yes to Jesus. Them that are stepping out to say yes to the salvation that is found only in Christ. Strengthen us in this regard to walk worthy of the calling. Them that are stepping out and saying, it's time for me to get busy. It's time for me to stop being a window watcher and start getting down there in the trenches and praising God and serving God. Them that are saying, it's time for me to find my place of service in the house of God and stop being spoon-fed when I ought to be teaching somebody. Stop sitting upon what you told me to do and start stepping out into the full dimension. And Lord, help us to be obedient to your voice even when it is not popular because you call us to the undignified that your glory would be revealed. Open our hearts to receive your word with gladness and to walk it out in Jesus' name. Amen. No one move. No one move. I need you to do something very important for me. If you just gave your life to Jesus, can you just please wave at me real quick? Just wave at me if you gave your life first time. Amen. Bridget Gonzalez, can you come here real quick for me? I need you to do me a huge favor while no one is moving. I need you to follow Bridget Gonzalez. She's going to take you right up this side aisle out to the wood floor that's on the other side of this door right there. We want to put some information in your hand. We want to get some information for you. Amen. We don't want to see you saved and just by yourself. We want to get you plugged into the house of God. Amen. So I want those people right now, if you gave your life to Christ for the very first time, don't worry about your stuff. It's, it's okay. It's all right, so no, nothing's going to go anywhere. We just need a few moments of your time. We want to be able to get that information in your hand and get information from you. Amen? So if you can just take a step and move this way now, go, go, go. Why don't we put our hands together for them? First time. Everybody. Amen. Come on, keep clapping. Come on, this is somebody's brother that just came to Christ. This is somebody's little girl that just gave their life to Jesus. Somebody's mama saved and born again now. Keep clapping. Come on. Woo! If 
If I could get some of my main event leaders to go out and help Bridget, she's gonna need some help. Please go and assist her. Thank you so much. Amen. Grab somebody's hand. Let's get out of here. Did you hear from God tonight? Amen. God is so good. Squeeze that hand. Father, we bless you tonight for the word that came forward. Father, we thank you that we will no longer be window watchers. But, but God, tonight we declare we will be like David and be undignified in who you called us to be. As we leave these doors, I pray for an undignified praise to hit us. As we leave these doors, I pray for an undignified worship to follow us to our jobs tomorrow. As we leave these doors, I pray for the Spirit of God to follow us out of this place into our homes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you. Now, God, cover us as we leave this house, God. We leave this house, but not out of your presence, God. Be with us as we go out of these doors. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We love you. Be safe.